Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to City Girls with Devil Potato Diary. If you guys know who I'm sitting with right now, very, very important man. His name is Michael Jackson. Michael! <laughs> I didn't know I was that important, man. I appreciate You're that. important. Oh, my God. But So, Michael, I didn't mm. know your other name was um, Jafar Ferguson. I don't know who the hell that nigga is. I don't know who Jafar Ferguson is. You know, I, somebody is on the, somebody's on the internet messing with me. But how I think that name came about, right? Mm -hmm. I had an assistant that worked for me who was also a paralegal. So, she knew a little bit about the law and stuff. And she stole from me. And... Uh, I eventually fired her, but prior to firing her, I think that name came up because I think she was up to no good. So yeah, I, I have no clue. Like I Google, somebody sent it to me one time. Said Google said you're Jafari Ferguson. What kind? I'm like, what the hell does this come from? I have no clue. They are Jafari is uh, they trying to mix up an a uh, Jafari with a who the hell's a Ferguson? That's a white man's name. So I thought it was like Look your at slave me. name. I'm nowhere close to white. <laughs> and slavery's been over. It's like, Kuntuketa, no, I'm um, Toby, but a sucker. <laughs> Make a long story longer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so how I think she created his name, because she was up to no good. About maybe six months before she got terminated, she came to me and told me, hey, Mike, there is there's a company called West Coast. Mind you, my entertainment company at that point is uh, Blacks Entertainment, and I had a new one called West Coast Entertainment. She said, Mike, there's somebody else using West Coast in some entertainment. Mm -hmm. And West Coast is a common name for California or whatever. So yeah, like West Coast, like West Side. Yeah, West Side. Like until we die. Yeah, so the she said, Crip and the Blood. Can you Crip walk? No. <laughs> so, I don't know how to do the blood dance. I don't know how to do it. That's, that's the what? Which one is that one? The ones I mean, I, I look crippled, but that was crip, crip walk, okay? I know I dance like I was in, to have two left legs. But that looked like, that's what a crip walk always looked like. I learned from like, um, from Tupac. Snoop Dogg and, and the other guys that wear blue, okay? <laughs> so she's out of nowhere, she said, Mike, there's another company hit me. I'm like, how would you even know? Who contacted you? Who told you there's another company called West Coast? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think. You know, she, this girl was stealing. She started stealing by uh, overpaying herself through my payroll system. And then what she also did, I had my phone company in the United States was called Verizon. Not, not my phone, but that, that's who I paid my cell phone bill to. Oh. Verizon. Verizon was on the popular ones. Yeah. So this girl got a, went and got her phone on a Verizon as well. So that way, if I look at my account, there's a Verizon bill. I don't know whether it's mine or hers. So she was smart too. So she was using my car to pay for her bill as well. She got the same spe co um, cable company as me called Spectrum. I found this, when she, had, she did something, and then when she did that one thing, I started to look up everything. My eyes got open. So I started finding all these little things out that she was doing to make money or steal money. You know, uh, the biggest thing she did, how I caught her, was, you know, um, I didn't care much about YouTube or the money was, you, you know, YouTube was probably at a point making like two grand a month. I didn't two thousand dollars a month. I didn't really care for it. I had bigger things to look forward to and mm -hmm. to look. And I remember she's uh, she started like run my YouTube, putting it together. Didn't tell me it was making money. Mind you, she went into YouTube and put all her bank information, everything was in there. I didn't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't care for it. I wasn't putting no products on there. She was taking videos of mine and posting it there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but one time my best friend. Chinese best friend, who I call him, he was around me a lot, so he did a lot of, he had a lot of videos of me. So I hit him up, I said, hey, Chinese best friend is always around me. Give him the password so you could log into my YouTube and put videos there so we have, so we'll probably start making some money because I didn't know what, she, she was just taking the old stuff and putting it in, making money. I didn't know. I was not on my YouTube, I'm too busy for, to worry about $2,000 problems, you know. Mm -hmm. But... She was doing that, and she didn't want to give me the password. I said, give me. She said, well, I don't want to put too many people in. The, I said, the guy's always with me. He got the content. Get the password. I just want the password. It's my YouTube. She went fought, fought to give me the password. Finally, she gave it to me. He looked it up, and then here we found all her bank information. 
wow. she's making money. So when that happened, then I started to look up everything. I started looking into my my bank, into all my statements, and I started realizing all those things. But I think she wanted to steal bigger money. That's why I think she created Jafari Ferguson under my name, Michael Blackson. When she told me she was making, she, she told me about that other company called West Coast. She was going to test Jafari Ferguson to that other West Coast. So we Googled up Michael Blackson. I'm like, oh, it's the same people. It's the same person. So when I get a check for West Coast, she was steal it and put it into the other West Coast that she probably had on a Jafari Ferguson. So all those, Google is completely wrong. And the thing, and I knew it had to be somebody with some kind of like smart on legal stuff because I would have my guy remove Jafari Ferguson. And then when you look, it's back up there again. She just kept putting it back. So Jafari Ferguson is some fraudulent fake thing that somebody created. I have no clue what that is. I don't know who that nigga is. You don't know Jafar. I don't know Jafar. He's a cute name, my so nigga. Imagine but your kids, they'll be thinking like that is your name. So, no, one time somebody actually wrote a, my agency wrote an article and they had Jafar in it because they got it from Google. I'm like, take this crap off. That's not my name. I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey, that's cute. That, that's Horrible, man. <laughs> so what I was saying, you know, pretty much watch who we let in your life. Yeah. There are so many bums out there, intelligent bums, but thieves yeah. that want to just come around just to find a way to get over I've on you. I've experienced bums around me. And so, it's, yeah. it's crazy that people will just go such a big length to even try to destroy you, to steal money from yeah. you, even when you're trying to put them on. You know? And they start, off, they start off so nice, like they really care yeah. about you, they're all about yeah. you. Yeah. You know, but they have a different agenda, different intentions, you know. But they, and sometimes people wonder why they don't become successful. Mm -hmm. in anything because you know you could use better of just you know if you need advice or help on getting successful ask a successful person don't try to steal from them yeah you know so so you've been but, backstabbed a lot you feel or you, you you've been given the raw door like a raw deal a lot or is it like from that experience it, you learned that yeah me yeah, um, a chance. and i'm such a forgiving person you yeah, know but, but when you steal from me and you are lie, I can't let you back in because of all thief does is find a better way to steal next yeah. time. That's all they do. That's what they do. If yeah. you put a guy in jail for 10 years and he comes out, he's going to know how to create that still crime better. You're going to mm -hmm. be a better criminal. Jail going to teach you to become a better criminal. Yeah. You know, they, a they thief does, they don't, yeah, they just find a smarter way of doing it. Like they're pissed they got caught. Yeah. So now they're going to find a, another way of not getting caught this time. So. Yeah. Somebody steal from you, let them out your life. Don't let them in. She, this girl offered to come back. She worked for free. I'm like, he didn't work for free. I don't. I'm, and the reason why I didn't even call the police or get police involved because I'm like, she was my assistant. She knew too much of my personal information. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to. I'm like, that money to me is chump change. You know, I mean, I could make that money in a weekend. Or everything you stole from me, I could make it in a weekend. Yeah. You know, so I'm not gonna risk you trying to get more. And, and try to do more because I don't call the police and try to put you in jail or that stuff, you know. But that all the saying this because the Jafari Ferguson, whatever that name is, that's on Google. I'm not attached to it. I don't know what that is. I have no identification, you know, whatsoever that has to do with that name. I have no clue. I didn't do it. So whoever did it, fuck you, Punk Beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really crazy. I mean, you just you you're a big mega superstar. I mean. I mean, you are. You are starting from you know, the movie Friday and um, coming come, to America. Yes, come, coming to America. And besides, even just coming to America, I mean, with your comedy, it's it's mm. crazy. You're doing you're doing amazingly well. As an African, how yeah. was it? You know, coming to America. The movie or the real life? The real life. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? Oh wow, man! You know what? I came to America with like just with the American dream. I had nothing. You know, a lot of time Africans go to America. They go on their flights, you know, going for scholarship, or they got, they're going for, or their parents got so much money to send them abroad to go to college, or you know, just I. On the other hand, my mother is an evangelist. You know, from the time she raised me as a little boy, she would just preached the gospel. She took all her kids around just churches. Is all we knew. We had no money, zero. People gave us places to stay. People gave us food. You know, it's like a pastor. Pastor go to a, a guest church. He preached, and they give him money. Okay. That's everything. That's what we earn. The only thing we had to spend was when my mom go and be a special guest at a church and speak, and they don't give her a little money. And that's how we ate. We had nothing. You know, uh, it's crazy how I grew up, a pastor's son, and like, I mean, the words that comes out of my mouth, 
Don't yeah, it's like a, no, it's like a pastor's son's word, but there's always a pastor kids when you gotta look out for man. We are the real bad guys, okay? <laughs> um, but I knew stand up was for me because I remember being a kid when I was a kid, about six years old, I was in Liberia at that time, mm -hmm. and I remember like t taking a tape recorder and pushing a recorder and like saying a bunch of curse words. I remember this moment, like because I was wondering sometimes, like where these bad words come from? Why am I so vulgar and so, you know? But I remember that it was meant to be. It happened at six years old. Three curse words on a recording tape. I wish I could find it. it just I was like, but pussy bitch, <laughs> punk. Bitch, pussy, dick, boss. I'm sure it was something similar to that. Shit, fuck. So were you guys having like TV? Where did you see these words? Because if you're an evangelist, you just woke up. I don't know. Yeah. So those just came spiritually? Yeah. No, no. You, you, it, you know, it was probably just words that I was going to be speaking later that were just trying to come out of my mouth a little early. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> like first words. Yeah. Of your future career. My, yeah, it was my future career right there. That's just coming out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from. My mother... We didn't hang around people that spoke those words. I have no clue, but like, where did you get them yeah, from? I was meant to be that Richard Pryor of Africa. Of Africa, which Eddie you know, Murphy, you, Richard, you, Richard Pryor. Doing amazing work. So it's always mm -hmm. interesting about when. When was your first break? When 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 was it when you were like, hey, get some? Oh man! So I, I'm in America. I, I got to the states. I was probably 13 years old. I'll go on, you know. Um, uh, let me see. All right, I get to America at 13. I'm different. I'm darker. I have an accent. I'm a little skinny, squinty little kid. Shy. You know, being verbally abused every day. I mean, them kids roasted the hell out of me. A lot of things I didn't even know about myself until I got to Africa, America. <laughs> America's like that apple. We you know guys like, don't eat the apple. Mm -hmm. America is like the place, like everybody in America ate the fucking apple, okay? Because their <laughs> eyes became open and they see things that you're not supposed to see. Yeah. Like I had no clue. I was dark skinned. So I came to America. Like back here, we never compare complexion. When I was a kid, we never be like, oh, you're lighter, you're darker. We didn't know. We just thought we're all the same people. We're all black people. Yeah. I went to America. I'm like, they said, you black? I said, of course, we are all black. They said, no, nigga, you black as hell. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? To <laughs> hell, black is that? We, we, we mean black as hell. It's, yeah, you, then they described how black I was. <laughs> it told me I look like under the bed. That's very dark. That's right. If you look, on, look under there, and it's dark. Under anything, it's dark, okay? Especially under the bed, it's really dark. Yeah. Uh, they told me the difference between me and midnight is 11.59. That's oh, yeah. dark. Yeah, wow. They said when God said, let there be light, I was out of town. And you're 13 when they're saying this? Oh, 13, oh, that was 13 all the way to like 18. They said, uh, every time I doo-doo, I think my penis fell off. <laughs> I guess my dude is black, so it looks like dick. Um, they, they, they thought because you dark looks like black dude. Everything, yeah, black doo-doo. Uh, they told me um, I have to wear white gloves before I eat chocolate so I don't <laughs> bite my fingers. At some point, did it hurt? Were you like, no, it, at that would moment, you cry? Would you, would, you, would you call your mom back in Africa and be like, mommy? My mommy, my mom was there busy working at McDonald's trying to make $50 a week to feed us. Oh. You know, uh, so at this point, I'm probably like, the first grade I went to in America was eighth grade. You know, and then not only that, not only did it verbally abuse me with my accent and my complexion, then, then it was clothing. Mind you, my mother's making about 50 bucks a week. So that's about 200 hours a month, and maybe 75 of that was going towards this basement that we lived in from somebody who had to how contribute. Many were you? How many kids? At that moment, it was me, my mother, and my two younger sisters. And no, and your father? No, my father, no, not my father. My mother and my father been apart for so long. So when you moved to America, he well, was there? No, no, he was never there. My dad so your never. Your mom was a single mom. Yeah, my mother was a single mother. Wow, that's crazy. So at one point, we lived in a shelter home because that was free. You know, so we got to save that extra 75 bucks. So mind you, she's only making that 200 hours a month. I mean, I mean, that sound like uh, in Ghana, it sound like a lot of money because it's I mean, Ghana, a lot of money to South Africans too. But it's back, Ghana. well, we talking about you know, we talking about paying rent and feeding kids and buying them clothes for school and you know everything else. So 
we didn't have enough money, enough money to buy fancy clothes. So I would go to school wearing like the, you know, the, the $10 sneakers. It has no name. Mm -hmm. And Americans are very materialistic. Yes. All they care about is, at that moment, we're talking about like, you know, late 80s, all they care about is like Nikes and Pumas and, you know, Lee chains, all those name brand stuff. Pelts, jeans would be like freaking 50 bucks. I'm like, that's a mama's whole week paycheck. Mother suckers, we can't spend that. So we'll go to like a stores equivalent to like, you know, Walmart now, which is a big cheap stores in America. It's called yeah, Walmart. Yeah. They have like, you know, back then they had other stores called like Woolworth and McCrory's. She'll buy me some pants for like $6.99 and buy me some sneakers. Sometimes you go to a supermarket and you can buy sneakers in the supermarket yeah. right next to the chicken. So you see chicken and then you see sneakers. So I would, my mother buy me some sneakers from the chickens from the supermarket. So now I'm going to school in um, chicken flavored sneakers. You had a rough. I had a very rough. You so now they're making rough. fun of my, so, but. So now they're making fun of your blackness. Now your chicken my, sneakers. Yeah, my chicken flavored sneakers. But I had to think about it. We didn't care about materialistic stuff when I was a kid back in Africa, back then. Things different now, you know, things. The Western world has, has, has been poured a voodoo on us now. We're into materialistic stuff now. But prior to us being materialistic stuff, all a girl really cared about is a guy having on some brand new clothes when I was a kid raising up in, in Africa. You come some new clothes, like, damn, you look nice. You got new clothes. We didn't care who made it or what the name, as long as it's brand new. So I'm thinking it was the same thing when I got to America. So here I am, my mother took me shopping, come on, chicken flavor sneakers, some church pants. It cost her like six ninety nine. A shirt, button up shirt that cost about six ninety nine. My whole outfit is about good six six. I'm about twenty two dollars and eighty cents. I'm about to sh shit on all my haters because I'm thinking I got some new clothes. Mm -hmm. I go to school. They look at me like, Mike, uh, what you got on? I said, What do you mean with the hot one? This is brand new. Nobody never worn this before. They said, Yeah, but it's not Nike. It's not Lee James. It's not Adidas. I'm like, It's brand new. It lit my ass up. Yeah. I got roasted every damn minute. So now, okay, so now, and I went through that for about two years, almost two years, eighth and ninth grade. By the time I got to 10th grade, I got a little job selling. When you're like 16, that's the working age, right? Uh, no, no, you can work at 14. Oh, in America? You yeah, you work at 14. Okay. Back then, I'm not sure what it is now. But yeah, I mean, 14, you can work. So, but mind you, I even was working when I didn't have legal papers to work. You know, I didn't have, at that point, we were still, like, struggling to find papers. Our visa freaking expired, you know. Uh, and now we're trying to find papers to work. But I'm 14 years old, so I, I couldn't even get a job that involved showing a social security number. Because to work, you need a social security number. Mm -hmm. I had a job selling candies. This guy took a bunch of teenage kids from the hood, took us into the rich white neighborhoods, have us sell these candies to them. Candy that's worth 50 cents, we sell it for like $3. And then out of every $3, we get like 75 cents of it, each one. Yeah. He was like a candy pimp. He's a candy pimp. And we like candy hoes. <laughs> this nigga was pimping us. And you... And we'll go to the neighborhoods and lie to the rich white people. My name is Michael. I'm part of the youth court, youth court. I'm trying to stay out of trouble. And this money is going towards this and that. We just trying to get the three dollars. So how much would you make? So I'm making good money. I was making almost as much as my mama. Did your mom know that you were slaying candy? Yeah, she knew I was slaying candy. I think at that point my mom was doing like in-house nursing. When I she was doing like a it was more like taking care of old folks. She'll yeah. go for the weekend, stay in people's houses for the weekend, not for the weekdays, and come home on the weekends. And then she'll make a little bit more money. She was making probably at that moment maybe two hundred dollars a week. You know, and I would make about fifty dollars a week. You know, so I would give her like half of my money. We we did that as kids coming from Africa. We knew we have to give our parents half our money we would earn. So I gave my mother half of my money, and then to go towards rent and everything else. And I saved my other half. So I saved it during the summertime. And then when it was time to go to school, I went and bought me some name brand sneakers. I got my first pair of Pumas. My first pair of Wrangler jeans. Your own money. With my own money. At 14. At 14. I did that. So by the time I, so when I hit 10th grade, I had name brand stuff a little bit. I was, you know, feeling better about myself. I maybe had two pair of good sneakers. I could switch back and forth 
One was a pair of Adidas and the other one I think was Pumas. So then kids kind of like stopped making fun of my clothing a little bit now. Because of your two pair of sneakers. Because I have two pair of sneakers that had names, mm -hmm. real names, that cost over $38 or whatever it was. And then, that, you know, maybe girls are saying hi to me now. Oh, they didn't before? Oh, no, no. Now then nobody's going to fuck a nigga with some chicken flavor sneakers. <laughs> Would you fuck a nigga that has a chicken flavor sneakers? No, no, no. no. I wouldn't be, you know. probably wouldn't fuck a nigga with a goddamn steak pair of sneakers, my fucker. Steak pair of sneakers. I wouldn't fuck a nigga with you with just eat. <laughs> 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 I think, I think it's beyond sneakers now. Oh, it was crazy. So at this moment now, I kind of like, is mind you, at the moment I've been in the States for two years. Yeah. I've been in America for two years. Now I know what it takes to fit in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then I'm on the following year. My mother moved to, from moved from New Jersey to Philadelphia, Pen okay. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Is that a better area? Uh, it was, it was, it definitely, I got to, if I never moved to Philadelphia, I probably won't be here right now doing this. Philadelphia definitely, I mean, when I think of home, it's like Western Africa, when I, you know, when I, Liberia and Ghana, and then you know, I spent time in Nigeria as well as a kid. But then my, that fourth home is always be Philadelphia. Yeah. Philadelphia definitely made me who I am, brought out this comedy out of me. So I got to give a shout out to Philadelphia. Even though today I have a house outside of Philly and I always go home. You know, I'm very, I'm very good friends with like the owner, uh, owners of the teams, like yeah. the Sixers and the Eagles. And I would go and watch a game and hang out with them. That Philly became part of me. Yeah. Because I'm, 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 luckily my mother has some other Liberian friends that live in um, Philadelphia. And they say, hey, life is cheaper here. Because all that whole time in Jersey, it's like me, my mother, and my two sisters sharing like a one bedroom. So my mother's in the bedroom. I'm in the, li in the living room sleep. Because it was too expensive in Jersey then. I mean, a decent place to live then was like $550 a month, $600 a month. But I heard in Philadelphia, it had a nice place. You had a three bedroom for like $300 a month. So my mother's like, okay, we'll move to Philly. And when we came to Philly, so now I'm in Philly. I said, okay, now it's a new place. These kids don't know what I went through. You know, I don't know how to dress a little bit. And what I realized about America is when people don't know you, you, the less you speak, the more they're suspicious and curious who you are. Mm. You know, when you don't say much, people are like, who's this guy? Why you don't say much? You know, because when I was back there, I used to, back in Georgia, I used to defend myself every time. They called me names and I, I tried to like, I said, well, at least whatever my biggest joke is, when, they, when they black kids made fun of me, I said something, at least I know where I'm from. That was, and that, that's a, that, that make you, somebody will punch in your stomach, like, you know what I mean? Because you, I'm telling them they don't know where they're from. Because I felt like yeah. I had to defend myself. It yeah. was the only defense mechanism, mechanism that I had is like, hey, at least I know, I know where I'm from. I'm African. I'm African, you know. Okay. So by the time I came to Philadelphia, I'm like, okay, these kids don't know me. I'm new. I know how to dress a little bit. I know the name brand stuff I have to wear. Um, I'm just going to just be chill. And that's how I was. I was like really quiet, you know. I was dressed nice. I was working at the time. One thing about Philadelphia. Quiet. Oh yeah, I was very quiet. When I first came to Philadelphia, right away I got a job. In Jersey, it was so hard to get a job. Because yeah. A job at McDonald's was luxury. That's how exactly McDonald's has really shitty food. No disrespect to McDonald's. I, hope, I probably never get them. edit this part. I want a McDonald's commercial, okay? <laughs> but um. Me too. I want McDonald's sponsor me <laughs> my podcast. Please forgive so, me. So. I, I got to Philly and I got a job at Domino's Pizza. I was like a, at that time I'm 15, I'm just answering phones. Then I learned how to deliver pizzas on a bicycle because I didn't have a license. You could do, and the thing about delivering on a bike is faster. You, you maneuver through traffic. Mm -hmm. You go on one way streets, it doesn't matter. So I was able to, I was, right away I got a job. That summer, we moved to Philadelphia during the summer before I went to the 11th grade. So, I, you know, so during that whole summer I worked, saved up money. And then um, before school started in September, I went to Jersey, went to all those good stores that I, that I and bought a bunch of nice clothes, came back to Philly with my clothes. Now I'm going to school in Philadelphia. And kids like, damn, who's this kid? Who's this new kid? And back then, it wasn't that many Africans in America. It was mostly Jamaicans, okay. people from the islands. And most of the, all the, of course, most of the Jamaican guys were dark complexion. And back then, if anybody was dark skin, 
with an accent. Mm -hmm. They just thought you was Jamaican. And one thing the Jamaicans all did back then was so dope. They were all drug dealers. Weed, were, weed or just drug well, dealers? Well, mostly weed. But they were most, Jamaicans were known as drug dealers back then. Uh -huh. So whenever they saw somebody with an accent and dark skin, they thought they were a drug dealer. So now I am in Philadelphia going to school. Guess what they thought? You're a drug dealer. I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> they thought I'm a Jamaican drug dealer. But you used to slay candy, so it's not too far off. It's not, yeah, you're right, mother sucker. <laughs> but guess what? I didn't argue with them. I didn't say, no, I'm not, because I want them to leave me the hell alone. Everybody's afraid of the drug dealers. You know, because drug dealers have guns, they're bad guys, whatever. I'm like, these guys have no idea I was dealing pepperoni pizza, <laughs> ground beef, sausage, medium and large pizza with cheese. But I just kept quiet, kept chill, let them think whatever they want. And then nobody really bothered me that much. Because they didn't know if I was a drug dealer. They had no idea who my big boss was. Like, because I was probably about four kids in high school that's so dope. And a lot of them, when they sell dope, they, they got a bigger guy out yeah, there. Yeah, like the big boss. Like the big boss they work for. But nobody knew who my big boss was. They had no idea Domino's Pizza was my big boss. <laughs> <laughs> so you never did, um, so you never did like, any, any crime? Like, That's what I never did, because I lived in the hood yeah. so easy. Because there I am, my mother's working. She came to Philly, she's working the same overnight job where she's gone Monday through Friday. So just me and my two sisters, I have to like pretty much look out for each other. You know, during the weekdays, mommy just come home on the weekends because she had to go make ends meet. You know, so, and you could easily follow the wrong crowd or follow the, be a real drug dealer because yeah. that's what they want. They want, they'd rather have younger kids than if they get caught, they won't do much time in jail, you know. That's why they like the younger kids to be so dope. Oh. Yeah, because if they get caught, they, you can't put a juvenile, you're not gonna do much time compared to an adult. So a lot of times, drug dealers want younger kids to work for them. And I have friends, you know, other, even some other, these other two librarian guys that I was real cool with, we, we knew each other, we're, we're like all hung out together. We call each other cousins. And those guys, you know, they follow the street side. I follow, I, I would get on the bus, go to work after school, and I'm there all night, come home 11 o'clock at night, go to sleep, wake up, go to school, from school go to work. I was off the streets because I was working. I just didn't know. I just didn't allow myself to fall into that so deadly thing. You never did. You never got caught up. You never got caught, caught up. You want to go chain like all the other kids? Like you never? I never got caught up. But the thing about it, I made money because when I started delivering, I was making tips. So I'm making about $25 a day in tips. So then I would dress, I would buy jewelry with my money. I would look like, I would look like a drug dealer that wasn't selling drugs. I was like a bootleg drug dealer. So all the other drug dealers now, they see you... They, they, they don't know who my boss is. They don't want to fuck it. with me because then I'm like, he might be dealing with this big guy they're going to blow all our head off. <laughs> the biggest guy. The biggest guy. He must from like, Africa. For all he's from another part of town. <laughs> who is your dealer, Mike? <laughs> who are you working for? I can't say it now, please. If I tell you, I have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. So, so then it made me comfortable. Now that I'm making, now people are afraid of me. I'm comfortable now. Now I'm slowly roasting people. Like, what are you wearing now? I'm thinking about what I went through. So now I'm making fun of their clothes. And that's when the comedy started. Oh. Now that I'm very, you know, now people are like, kind of like curious of me. They're, they're nice to me. Then it made me feel a little comfortable. Now I'm about to roast you back. Be an asshole back. I'm trying to be an asshole. Trying to get my revenge from when I was 13 years old, mother sucker. <laughs> so, tell me something, right? In mm. this America, do you, did you meet a girlfriend at that time that you kind of got into a serious relationship nah. with, or were you oh. busy with like different women? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's <laughs> slow down, okay? <laughs> I didn't get coochie for very late. When right? did you get coochie for the first time? My first coochie was probably a, because. Yeah, and even when, I, when they thought I was a drug dealer, they probably think I was banging all the chicks, whatever, but I was still timid inside. I didn't get coochie till like maybe like 18. What? In America? Yeah. It was like my, I think the first girl was my prime, was it my senior prime date? I think she was probably the first one I ever shoved my penis in. Did, those days, did you guys use a condom? I don't, we're just excited to stick out dick or anything. I don't, but you know one thing I did before, prior to having sex, you know, a lot of guys carry condoms in their wallet as if they're having sex. Yes, of course, of course. But that's, you know, I remember carrying condoms around. Oh, my, almost my first, my almost first experience was almost a crackhead. 
Black women, they call them, they call them, they call them pipers, okay? These are the neighborhood ladies that do drugs and they'll fuck a young person for like 10 bucks. I remember, I, I didn't follow through with it, right? Because it was my first time, I remember it was this one piper, we called him Philadelphia Piper or Crackhead, very thick looking, good looking woman. And she like, you know, for 10 bucks, you get everything, you know? Everything. So I remember, I remember being home that day, nobody was around, I remember sneaking her into my place, right? But I was so afraid to have sex because this is how dumb I was. I thought sex was painful to the guys. And with your big penis that, you know. I, I didn't even know I real. I didn't know I had a big penis then. That came <laughs> later. You don't know you have a big dick till a bunch of women start telling them, nigga, you got a big dick. Or your dick is abnormal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your dick retarded. Yeah, yeah. When you got big, anything big is retarded like, for some like, reason. Yeah, like I had a big ass in this Yeah, you got a retarded ass. Yeah. I got a retarded dick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know I had a retarded dick till later in life. When I was really having sex. Yeah. So I remember bringing this cracker into my house. And like, I was so nervous. I had a condom of everything. I was like scared because I, I thought sex was painful to the guys. I didn't know the women go through the pain. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the one shoving something in her. I just thought it would be painful to me. I was just, uh, yeah. So I was so scared. I just, I gave her the $10. She tried to, she offered to like, give me a blowjob. You said no to him? I was just, I was my first time every day. I was scared. I just gave her the $10 and kicked her out. Free ten bucks of the Free money. Free ten bucks, the man. The money that you work so hard for. Deliver, you know how much pieces I got delivered for that goddamn ten bucks, man. <laughs> and I, I let, I let it go. I didn't, nothing happened. So I just put my condom back in my bag pocket. I'm like, I just when I'm, when I'm ready, somebody close to my age. Okay, I'm not about to. She was probably every bit of like thirty years old, and I was like probably, ah, uh, high seventeen, maybe sixteen and a half, seventeen. So I didn't follow through. I was scared of sex. Do you ever see her again? Fuck no. I'm sure she's dead. Okay, if she's not, she's probably look like this right now. Okay. <laughs> they were healthy back then. Back then, crackheads were healthy. They, they were thick. Yeah, they look like you. I <laughs> look like a crackhead. <laughs> no, you don't like a crack. I'm saying they look that good. Yeah. Now crackheads look like this. No, now they. Now you don't want to sleep with these. No, there's a lot of crackheads everywhere these days. You know. But... <laughs> you kind of look like a crackhead. Don't boy. play with me. <laughs> I'm like a sexy crackhead. I mean, I could see you smoking crack with your. Um, uh, um, my thing, I don't understand how people become drug addicts. Like, why would you take anything that's going to harm your body, make you not think right? Yeah. Make you. Suck a dick for ten bucks. No, like, I mean, it's physical. The physical, the physical addiction. That's why you shouldn't start it. Yeah, don't start it at all. You know. Yeah. What I mean? So I it just, I just never got into it. I mean, so many years, as people were like, of, you know, when I got older and I'm hanging out with people that smoke weed, like I hang out with Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa, and whenever those Wiz, especially Wiz, whenever Wiz Khalifa sees me, I have to act like I'm already high. <laughs> I got otherwise he's gonna give me weed. And so he see me, I be like. Mike, I'm, oh yeah, my dog, I'm fucked up. <laughs> I was just smoking everything back then, man. I'm, I had crack cocaine, everything, settling, <laughs> man. I sniffed it all, dog. I'm fucked. I appreciate it, dog. I run the fuck away, goddamn it. Is that how Hollywood is, though? What? Like, is it like drug infested? Mm, I mean, no, no, no. I'm not saying you should bust your friends, but mm -hmm. is it like kind of big way? As like they were quite getting there, I'm just know that at any point I'll just find a cocaine and crack and like at a party, like. Uh um, you know what, I, I, I mean, I've been shocked a few times where I'll have, a, like, I have a lot of house parties and, you know, these girls will come in and ask for cocaine. I'm like, huh? I didn't know niggas did cocaine. I just thought, okay. it, was, I thought, just thought it was white people drug. No, they, they're doing them things out there. But I just never, I never got into it. I'm not, a, I don't care about it. I don't want that stuff around me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it happens out there. I just act like, I don't act like I'm stupid i know it's going on and i just walk to the next room i go i walk in this party mother doing sniffing coke i just i'm like where is the uh toilet. the toilet yeah where the room where there's, <laughs> there's smoking sprite motherfucker i want to drink some sprite and, and some fanta okay so i just stay away from it it's just not my thing i just i'm not going to do anything that's going to like you know eventually destroy me because at the end of the day that's what drugs do it's going to destroy you yeah because you when you get high you know yeah 
I mean, okay, if you're going to stick with weed and don't, you know, that's good. But there's some people that smoke weed and they get high. They're like, I, mm. I, like, I want to get high. I'm like, then you're going to start adding shit to your weed. And then you want to get high. And then you want to try doing this and doing that. The next thing you high in heaven because you die, motherfucker. Okay? And you die. And you die. It's going to kill you eventually. Yeah. It all is going to end up killing you. I was actually having you. a conversation with a friend about that. That even now in Africa, there's such a huge pandemic of drugs coming in. And they don't even teaching the kids what they're actually doing. Who's smoking crack like it's, it's nothing, but you know, yeah, people are dying I, out here. Never got into that stuff, man. That's why, that's why I, I mean, I've been around for a long time. I, you know, a lot of people, sometimes people see me like, you know, in your 40s, like, you know, I say, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke nothing, I don't get high, I don't do none of that stuff. How old do you know you? I don't know how old I am. I'm African. I don't, listen, no Africans know our age, okay? <laughs> when I, I was born, <laughs> what? Well, you see, you was probably born in a hospital with it's parents. Right. You see, you know, I was born in the backyard. Nobody was there to write shit down when I was born. We don't go looking for, you don't go thinking about when you was born to you, you got to travel. No, my God, I got to put something on this paperwork. <laughs> uh, how old, when you, Mom, how old am I? I don't know. You was born to me. See, the, it was me, you, the goat. As the goat, go like, man. I'm like, the goat. <laughs> the goat don't know when I was born. Mom, shit, just. Well, like, your sister, when was she born? I don't know. Well, count the two years behind her and just we call you, call Joey. Okay, you was born on Monday. Find a Monday in whatever year you want, write it down, and that's his birthday. That is crazy. you like from Africa, Africa, Africa. I'm Africa, Africa, man. The thing, I'm but, South African, so we not, we are Africa, but we have, you know, yeah. we, we, we were colonized by white people. And for they, a long time. Did they leave yet, or are they still there colonizing you guys? They fucking still there. <laughs> they still there. So, so I want to talk a little bit about your your love life. You proposed to Rada, your fiance. I mm. mean, I've spoken to her on Facetime before. She's a sweet lady. Yeah. And um, you proposed on the Breakfast Club. That was a big. That proposal. was really big, real, real big. It was really big. Um, you know, prior to her, I was I was in a relationship with a very beautiful black woman. It was such a beautiful relationship. But every, everything, things go bad at times. Yeah. You know, the big, the biggest problem was me and my dick. You wanted to give it to everyone. Uh, my dick was my. I was committed in the relationship. My penis was not committed. So, is it? Do you think every man wants to stick it into everywhere? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I was probably making up for all the coochie I never got. I mean, I Shut turned, up. I turned away the crackhead when I was eighteen years old. You know. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get much coochie. Then I was, and then I always been in a relationship after that, like from my, my, from like 22 years old all the way to like whatever. I always had a relationship, you know. So I never, I missed out on a lot of coochie. So I'm not sure if I'm, I'm just trying to make up what I never had, or just in my blood to be a, you uh-huh. know, is that a? No, I just, I don't look as a hoe. hoe. You actually, you. I don't look as a hoe. I'm just, I'm just a man. So a man is about. Okay, tell Man. me. So now this other relationship with, with this black woman, you were with her. Beautiful and and she dumped you for cheating. She got fed up with my cheating. Was it a lot? And you get caught a lot because you were just. Oh yeah, I got caught. Oh man, my dick's been on, on the internet. Uh, my your dick. Yeah, I can, Yeah, it, it, my dick has been on the internet, and I and end up. I can't really get into too much details about it because I end up suing and all of that stuff. I can't get the details. Yeah. But make a long story short, the results of the suing and everything, my dick is happy. I understand you because that means it's, make, it's kind of paying you for all your hallways. My dick is very satisfied with the decision that was made. But, and when and I broke up my ex... Posting your dick, did they benefit from your dick? Because they took the picture. So did they get royalties? Uh, I, I don't remember who it was. That's how much I was a hoe I was. I don't remember. I mean, I remember the whole incident. I remember what happened. I remember the ladies that, that did it. You know what I mean? But I mean, I don't remember her name. It was in, it was doing like Super Bowl weekend, and I met this. But and the thing was it like it wasn't like some young girl looking for a club. It was like a mature, grown woman that did that. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's okay. Thank you. You know, my dick is happy with the decisions. But the thing about it. I, my whole life I lied and cheated, you know, and, and I'm like, when I broke up my last girl, that be prior to Ryder, I was like, what am I, what am I lying for? Who am I, why, why am I lying? Why, if I want to be with a lot of women, then be the hell single. So. And sleep with everybody you want to sleep with. So 
what are you saying? So you saying that so I'm saying Rada that lets you date other girls? Well, no. So when I when Rada came around, you know, I told her, I said, listen. After my last relationship, I realized my big problem was my dick. My dick don't know how to be loyal. This nigga is a whole different mother sucker. You know what I mean? I want to just, he's getting my nerves. You know, he what don't listen to me. Do? What does your dick do? He just like to travel with it, without a passport. This guy has no <laughs> visa and he goes places <laughs> with no permission. I don't have nothing to do with it. I, I sit in that and I'm like, listen to me, dick, okay? Cut it out. What is your problem? He said, look, man, listen, leave me alone, okay? I'm a free nigga. I want to do what I want to do. So then I had to, so when I met Rod, I said, listen, my dick been free. You know, my dick don't listen to me. He wants to be free. If you want to come in this relationship, you have to accept my dick for who he is. He's a whole different person. He's his own person. So Michael's brain is Michael who's a I'm sweet. I'm Michael Blackson, a sweet, innocent, young little virgin boy that turned out coochie. And get the ten dollars back. Remember that? Yeah, that's, yes. that's, that's Michael. Michael. Real Michael. Real Michael. This nigga down there, that's a whole he by himself. I when he goes places, I just follow <laughs> along. So <laughs> God. So I told Ryder, I said, listen, Ryder, I'll be committed to you. My dick's not gonna be committed to you. This nigga is his own thing. So, you know, if you wanna accept it, she said, Okay, that's fine. You know, she said, you know, she she I like you a lot, Mike, and I want to be with you. So that's what it has to take. That's fine. And then we, you know, and I was, when we, me and her first started dating, I was still doing my thing. She was my girlfriend. All my side bitches knew. I had about, at that time, I probably had so about you had seven. Side bitches. It's not like you're snacking, like your dick is like, hmm, today I'm going to see Ronda. No. Tomorrow I'm going to see. Oh, no, no. I had like, I had probably about five or six of my favorites. <laughs> you know, maybe two local and maybe three out of ten that would fly in. And come and keep me company. So are you a nympho? Oh, I know. I don't think I'm a nympho. I'm Your just penis. I'm just a man. A man. <laughs> I'm not a nympho. because uh, I get confused what a nympho is. Nympho is somebody who won't have fun sex all the time. Is that what a nympho is? I don't think I'm a nympho, but don't get it wrong. I do want to have for some reason I sleep better after an orgasm. So every night? So I, I would probably want it every night. But then, honestly, I don't I don't want to Fuck the same woman every night. I, mean, I don't want my dick to start getting tired of her. Really? So yeah. what happens when you go and fuck somebody else? Do you say, oh, should I pay hell your last, your, your, your night last night? I mean, what, that's like, will, will you be like, oh, that's good. I mean, I just fucked, um, uh, you know, uh, Tiffany or Tiffany whatever name. Tiffany or whatever those names in America. Uh, yeah. Uh, Laquisha <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, it was like that early in our relationship. When we first met, she was like, what are you doing tonight? I said, well, you know, this chick is flying in, and that's when we didn't live together. I said, chick is flying in, and I fucked her. It was good. Sometimes she asked, she, she wanted me to send her a video of it. I mean, I can get that. Yeah, so it was like that. And then as she fell deeper in love, but I, Rada had her own agenda. When she came in, her goal, her agenda was to, like, make me fall in love, and I'll probably leave all them bitches alone. It's not going to happen. So she, you in love, but you're not leaving no bitches alone. Everybody's still going to get it. Oh, I, I love her. Um, I mean, in love, it might be a little bit hard. Because when you're in love with somebody, you do not want to see nothing else. But you're engaged. Yeah, I love her. You know, the thing about it, don't get it wrong. Every king needs a queen, which is a queen is a woman that you really trust. You know what I mean? You yeah. like, you, she, you, you go to sleep at night and not worry about nothing. You know what I mean? Like, she has your back. So you don't think she's fucking anybody else? Nah, I don't and think she would you, is. What if she did? Well, then she gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> gotta go. It's just that simple. Yeah, a king don't want to share his hoe, his queen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care. I, I can't. I don't. Want, I don't even want to share my hoes. But I can't control my hoes too because they're not my woman. Woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my queen is my queen. I I show this whole world that you are my queen. You know, I'm, and I, I don't want to sound sexist or whatever. You do a little bit. I do sound bad. I'm, it just, they're just nature of a man. Yeah, I think I you know? that, yeah. That's the nature of a man. And we don't say it because we don't want to, no man want to sound sexist. I don't want to be snitching on but, men. But you are. Man, we all we are. Snitch on us. We, men will have seven women and don't want nobody fucking any of them but us. I believe that. I believe that because in my mind, if I'm dating someone... Which, you know, I'd, I'd, 
I feel like I'm the best and they shouldn't be with anybody yeah, else. Yeah. Even the, if you can have a main, for example, and obviously I'm going to get in shit for this, but I mean, there's, you know, I was, I wouldn't have minded even maybe becoming a second wife because I would also want to be a main too. Oh, okay. But, but I, I mean, I, it's, it's yeah, but, other little, little mains after me. Yeah, but sometimes I women. Be the main, main, main. But, but like, sometimes women don't. At least mine. She she rather I uh, she rather I uh, go out of town, find a groupie, sleep yeah, with her, yeah. and I'm um, no more contact. That's what she rather have. That's what I was She don't want. Yeah. She don't want. She think anybody else would be like. If I'm seeing somebody once a month, is a relationship. That's a relationship. True. I wouldn't want that either. You know. I feel like and I feel like, but I don't think I'd want to know. I don't think I'd be like, hey baby, Michael, how was last night? You're like, it was good, baby. Ah, oh, fuck Lucretia. Yeah. And Lucretia picture was wet. Cause I mean. Well, but with right, with my lady, that turns her on. When me and her having sex, that's what she wanted to talk about. Like how you fucked the other girls? Yes. That's what makes her come. What about threesomes? We've done that too. We've done that well. She's, we did it as well. You know, sometimes she want to be there, sometimes, you know, and it got to a point where she didn't want to be there, and then she, she's, whatever the whole goal she wanted. During the threesome, she'd be like, you enjoying yourself too much, she wants to slap the girl and be like, I don't want to be here, or she'd be like, mm. No, nah, I think nice the, for my the more, the, the more I, I bang the other chick, the turns are on more. Yeah, we we are. Big up, brother. You're a strong girl. Yeah, she's, she's confident though. I think you know what? I think a lot of the times, I don't know, women are confident when they're secure. She lives with you. Yeah, I she lives with you, so mm -hmm. she knows that you're coming home to her. So you can no, fuck me and fuck. She don't always feel she 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 don't feel all hundred percent secure because she's not black. Which is. Right. You know, she feel like because if I'm if when I'm with see anybody else, I'll use, it's black women, like you know what I mean. And she just feel like you know, Mike, this is what you want, go and get it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I've dated everything. I mean, I've dated more black women than anything else. I've, you know, I've been with a white woman, and I'm now I'm with her, you know. But it's not we. It wasn't more of a preference of color. It was just when I met her, she just seemed like that one that was like stood out of all of them. And the reason why she stood out because, you know, the ones that were, the other ones that came around, like if she's come, they come to visit me, I would fly them down. Ryder was different. Ryder flew herself down. Ryder would take me to dinner. Ryder did, you know, she didn't, she was so grown and like she didn't, she wasn't, she, she didn't want to feel like she, she needed a man to do anything. And then she enjoyed having sex with me. So she was coming out, she was coming to fly to get some dick. She like, I'll pay my own stuff to get my own, to dig it. That, what, that's about, those things about her turn made her stood out and the rest of the chicks. You know, other chicks will have job. They're still like, sometimes women, it's just the smallest things that matters to a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a successful comedy. If I'm dating a woman, even if she just, she has like making little, her own little money, 10% of what I make or whatever, you know, I think don't bring the little things to me. You know what I mean? Like buying a tampon. Exactly. Don't bring the little yeah, things to me. Fact. Deal with it. Not because you bring little things on a on a big guy. You know what I mean? Like that's for big things. You want a two hour plane ticket? Like but when you worry, worry about me? Like when, when it's time to get a house, I buy a house. You want time to buy a car? I buy. Let me handle the big things. Don't when you bring little things to a big guy, it's a turn off. It's a turn off. Exactly. But you know. And the know, other women, like you know, and they, they start they turn them. They they a lot of time women don't understand when you dealing with a successful man. You know what I mean? Don't always about trying to ask and beg. Like, that shit would come. When he's feel comfortable and he knows and trusts and, and like you, all that shit would come. But right away you start asking for money and doing this or that, it's a turn up to a, a successful you, man. You, I mean, what do you feel? Because this is my, my show is called City Girls. And how do you, as a woman, gauge that? If, I mean, you don't have 30 guys asking you out. You can't give everybody a chance and not ask them for money. A lot of times, women gauge men through asking them for something because the, some of them run away and you're like, wait, good for you for running away. So how does, I, I mean... You know. But, you know, well, I'm, in the rest of the world, okay, like, I mean, mostly in America, most of the, there are a lot of very grown, mature women that work and make money, mm -hmm. that have real job careers. And I know it's a little different. I can, it's a little different in our continent. I mean, it's different here. A lot of women are oppressed, trust me. As long as they're oppressed, it, 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 it's a lot of times hard. It's harder for girls to push themselves without having to do stuff to get to where they need to go. Yeah. And, you know, you you literally try to do the right thing, but they will still have to fuck somebody to get to the top. Yeah. It's, so, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, but like I say, hey, some men, and the thing about it, a lot of these guys know that, and a lot of guys don't want, a lot of the athletes and stuff like that, 
they pay for those sex. And a lot of times they do that because they don't want no problems later in life, you know, hey, that's what you want, they pay and just get over with and that, you know what I mean? Me, I'm just, I'm a pimp. I'm not, you're not gonna, I'm not, you're not a, not a pimp, me. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So it's a turn off to me. I'm not a real pimp, but I'm saying like, yeah, I would. I mean, you're a hustler and you don't want to be. Yeah, I don't want to be a hustler. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, be a hustler. I, not for, I, not for, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm giving me some good dick too. You know, why you, I'm not charging you for this motherfucking dick. This ain't no average. Charge you charge each other. Yeah, I mean, you charge me two hundred for your pussy. I'm gonna charge two hundred for my dick. My dick is exclusive. No, I, I, charge, I charge you. I charge you two hundred and okay, no, I charge you four hundred. You charge me two hundred. You give me back that. No, 200. fuck that. My dick is worth. <laughs> Especially I'm in America. I'm telling. This is original black dick. This dick came from the village. <laughs> this ain't no average fucking New York Philadelphia dick. This motherland ain't no Chicago. Dick. This is motherland. This is original. Hey, they go big on the yeah. That's what happened when I have sex. This, this music, come on. Oh, when she comes? Uh, when, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when she comes, she does the sound. That's what. That's not what. Again. Well, when it, when I'm fucking, this sounds good to hear. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Michael. Okay, actually, there's a few questions that people ask me to ask you on um, on my live Instagram. I was like, I'm going to interview you. What's your net worth? Oh, I can't talk about that net worth. But you know the thing that what's on the internet is all like the internet is all wrong. Yeah, no, yeah, keep yeah, keep that, keep that I on there. Yeah, keep my it's two million dollars. Let me tell the IRS. We have a nigga in America called Uncle Sam. He's not really our uncle. He's not. He's a tax man. Okay. When you find out you make money, he won't come after you. I'm glad this shit is in South Africa. Don't watch this in America, please. <laughs> my net worth say two million. We'll keep it that way, motherfucker. I mean, you've got a beautiful house in Ghana, and this house, I love it. You know you yeah. This one thing about this house is looks so much better than my home back in the States, but this is like five times cheaper than the home back in yeah. the States. I just love this. This this is what makes me want to come home all the time. I mean, you feel rich just being in the house. Yes, just definitely. Like, I'm like, I'm in Hollywood, I'm the Hollywood star, and it's Hollywood kind of building house. I had, you know, think about it, I had to do this. It, and be proud of me buying this house. I had, um, I remember a few years ago, right before the pandemic, I, I, I would... I saw this one time house, I was going to get it. And I'm like, I just sat in there, I'm like, ah, I don't feel like a king in this house. Yeah. So I, I you know, I gave, I'm giving the guy some down payment and I end up losing it because Africa, nobody gave me your money back. <laughs> you don't want it, it well, you, you just lost it. Yeah. And I, get, I lost like $15,000 because I'm like, it wasn't it. But when I started to look again, you know, a, a year or two after the pandemic, I started to look again. When I came to this house, I'm like, and the guy that built the house, he was just finished building. He was almost done. He was still staying in here while he was building. I seen him like, this is the house of a king. I fell in love with this house right away. I mean, you look cool coming down the stairs with your pictures. Oh, and yeah. The Versace uh, outfit and the yellow glasses. And yeah, the yeah look at that like, glass. Fell in love with this house. So, yeah, this I is definitely why I like to come home. Um, but, you, you know. Peace of mind, right? You get peace, peace of, of mind. mind. I don't worry about nothing, you yeah. know. I mean, I wish social media didn't work here, but it still works here. So, I still can run away from that. You know, but like I get to eat my native food and relax and, you know, and chill, you know, but I have a bigger project than I'm here. The main yes. biggest thing is giving back, you know. Um, Why do you feel like you need to give back? Oh, you have to. When God bless you, you, you guys to give back, you know, and the people, the people you left behind, like those other kids in the village that like, that look, you know, that now they are looking up to you. It's like an athlete get drafted, a guy from the hood gets drafted, number one draft pick. Everybody from his town is like so proud of him, you know. You always get the one guy that makes it out of a hood, you know, and like you can't just forget about those people, you know. So you gotta do something, you know. You can't go go everybody a hundred dollars each. You think it's black tax. Black tax. We call it black tax in South Africa. What do you mean? Like <laughs> you get. Like, oh, you got black tax. Yeah. Like you have to give it well, off of you. Well, I'm not being as extorted, okay? You know, like in some part of America, it's extortion where. You know, like the the gang members feel like, you know, you're from this hood, you should give back, whatever. Yeah. But with me, no, you have to give by, with, out of your heart. Mm -hmm. You give out of your heart when God, God don't just bless you for a reason. You know what I mean? You don't come out of nowhere and you're the one draft pick all of a sudden and you go from no money to like $20 million as an athlete. You God picked you. Yeah, you are picked. You picked. So 
When you, is God you gotta do the right thing. When do you think he's picking you? Pick, got green on. It's green as money, motherfucker. You <laughs> when God picked you, when he gave you all that ass, okay? <laughs> yeah, Are you picking. an ass man? I'm an ass man. I'm an asshole. I'm an ass man. <laughs> <laughs> you like anal? <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, I don't do you anal. You probably heard somebody what that the hell? Crack, like the ass uh, crack. My dick is not made for his regular nigga dick for that. I'm I'm for the moment. That don't fit no ass, okay? Okay. Um, what other questions? What was you talking about? Yeah, so I'm build, I'm building I'm giving back by building a school yeah. in a village. Um I I'm see pictures of your school. I mean, you're doing amazing. Um, but you know, it's tough when you're building out here in your in Africa. You already know, you so many chances of being scammed. You know, and it, it, I mean, our continent is a beautiful place. It's where we originated from. This where the the world started in Africa. You know, there's also a lot of places where other things started scamming and all of that stuff. Stuff. You know, so you're gonna be scammed here and there. You know, you're gonna be building something and. And the builder is building your stuff and his stuff at the same time because you wonder why material costs so much money, you know, and then you drive three miles away, like, hey, this guy building another house with my material. <laughs> Anything is possible. Copying the same you know, design. Or you could be buying, you could you, you could be abroad and having somebody build you a house here and they're sending you pictures every month to show you the progress of the house. And you send you a picture of another person's house. He ain't really doing nothing, he's pocketing your money. All that happens. So, you know, you got to come around and be hands-on. The thing about it, people are going to get you. Just limit how much they get you. You know what I mean? Yeah. By knowing. You know, don't be, don't act, you know, let them know that you know what's going on. You know, they're going to get you. It's just like, just matter limiting how much they're going to get you by. So that's why I have to come as often as possible and go to the school and make sure that progress is going. I know when it's all said and done, I'm probably going to pay Three times the price of what it should have really cost to me. Yeah. You know, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It's paying black tax? Paying pay nigga tax. That's what it, I call it. It's called nigga tax. Nigga tax. Yes, yeah, black tax. Af tax. Yes. It's, it's black tax. And that's African nigga tax. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so I'm giving back, and it, it's a good feeling when you, you know, it's like when you go to um, church and you give your 10% tithes. I'm not, I, I did church my whole life. I'm not, I don't go to, I haven't been to church in probably seven, eight years. Because my mother's an evangelist. I did that church thing. I just think being around your mother is church. Thank you very much. Because I was around her <laughs> and I was wearing a short dress. I went and changed and wore a long dress. I felt like I'm in church. <laughs> my mother is church. She, she looked, she, she looked like, my daughter, you My mother's built like a Bible. Yes. Okay. That's a Bible walking. Oh, everywhere. The Bible, man. <laughs> like, oh, she, you saw whenever she, she, whenever she, she come said. around, I feel like my sins have been washed away. <laughs> yes. I look key too. <laughs> She, when she looked at me, she just took away all my bandages. <laughs> I, I wasn't a city girl anymore. I became uh, a nice church girl. Yeah, choir leader. Yes. I mean, you know, you saw me as a choir. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mama's here. You know. And the thing my mother, my mother just like, my mom seemed like we see demons right away. When she saw you, she's like, oh my God, the devil is here. I know. <laughs> She didn't pray for me. <laughs> you, and she try to be, you try to be as humble as possible. My mom, like, I don't know what to do. Excuse me, woman. Delilah. <laughs> you are not gonna fool me with that innocent. Hey, mother, how are you doing? She see the devil all in you, mother. Second. Oh, I'm not a devil. I know you're a sweet, innocent virgin. I mean, yeah. I'm, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, mama, hey, mama. Hey, so when are you coming to South Africa? As soon as they invite me, you know how we are. Yeah, yeah. Listen, how we are as entertainers, yeah. we are like, we don't go nowhere unless they're paying us. Yeah. South Africa got some money, I will come. You know, um, I'm working on London now. Like, you know, Papa was like, hey, might come. I'm like, I'm not coming. I ain't been to London in seven years. When I come to London, I'm going to pick up some money. Let's put some show together. Let, let, let's utilize me while I'm there. Let me just yeah. go up there. Let, me, let it go entertain them. You know, I'm the hottest thing in the streets, man. I'm hot in this I, place. You're really hot and you're really super funny. Like, you're actually funny. You know, you look like a crackhead, but you're funny. Yeah, I'm built like a crackhead, yeah. but I'm a, I'm a funny crackhead. You're a funny crackhead. I mean, I really appreciate this. Thank you for having me. Yes, but also one more. Can you give advice to city girls, How you know, in Africa? What are city girls about again? I mean, what are they about? The city like, girls sound like a whole... general city girls. Like, they, 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 they city girls everything. If, if a girl... <laughs> It's, it's fucking a nigga for money. They'd be like, that's a city girl. Oh, uh, I ain't got no, I have no word of advice for any hoes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you 
Just, like, you know, get your money, ladies. <laughs> um, you know, just be careful. But, I mean, just general just, advice of what you would give to, like, young girls. How, how you know... Um, young girls, young young people, young people trying to young make people in life. definitely. I mean, as entertainment, you know, me personally, I've never, I'm not like a movie star, I'm not a TV star, yeah. you know, but I'm successful because I am different. Yeah, different is always good. Different be original. Good. Don't try to be like nobody else. Be you. Can nobody duplicate who you are? You know, if you're a comedian. Talk about your own personal experience. Nobody could take your personal experience from you. If you're a singer, sing out of your heart. Let us, you know, write your own stuff. Don't try to be like Jay-Z or Beyonce or whatever. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. And that's how I was able to survive in America. When I when I went there, I was the first one to the first one of the first when you think about African comedy in America, I'm the only one the first one to think about. Yeah. You can't think of well, nobody else that started it. Else. Nobody else. You yeah, know, and, and no. no, I mean, Did I Trevor opened Noah the door. For, well, Trevor Noah, he came after me. Ten years after me. So you bigger than Trevor. And I'm not, I didn't say I'm bigger than him. I'm just saying that I'm originator. You're originator. You're originator. starter. I'm the starter. You're yeah. starter. Trevor doesn't look African. Goodness. The guy look like he's mixed, <laughs> you know. You know, he's like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, motherfucker. Yeah, he's like Will Smith. Yeah. But shout out to Trevor Noah, another um, African that went to America and made it. But, but Trevor went to America when he already had a name yeah, already. Yeah, he had money already. Yeah, he didn't he had money, money, right. He didn't go there. He already, he was invited there, pretty much. You know, yeah. me, I started out from the bottom and worked my way up. But I'm more of a, I'm more of a hood star, you know, um, meaning like I had the hood. You know, he got more of a white audience. Yeah. I don't think... Hood niggas know who Trevor Noah is, but they're gonna, they're gonna get to know him as long as he keep yeah. doing, you know, stuff. I know he's gonna come to America too, and he's in a couple of stuff. But the Africans know him, but they, you know, me, I started out with like the Black American hood because the thing with America, um, white America like everything that Black people do because Blacks are cool. Blacks are cool. Black is cool. Everything is Black is cool. So when Black people like something, then all of a sudden the white people jump on it like, okay, this is what's cool. You know what I mean? So that's how I kind of like got to the white people because now that black people like this, this guy's funny. So white people are like, who's this funny guy that black people are watching? He must be funny as hell because black people are like him. So, you know, black are trendsetters. Black is beautiful. Yes, it is. Black is beautiful. And Michael, you're a beautiful black man. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, you know, we are happy to have you in City Girls. I'll bring you to South Africa. Don't worry, daddy. I'm gonna bring the M of my life. Check it out. Bye, guys. Thank you, motherfuckers. <laughs>